You know, before I get into the the meat of this video, <clears throat> there's a few things that I need to say up front that will, of course, serve as the intro to this masterpiece. And of course, you have seen the title. <clears throat> now I'm going to get this video out the way as I sit here and smoke on an LFD Maduro because one of my local cigar shops have a cigar function. They have a rep from La Florida Dominicana. And they are actually raffling off a box of these cigars. And I got to get there to get my name in that hat. So I'm going to do this video. And then I'm going to go smoke me some sticks. Or some more sticks rather. <laughs> but I thought I would take the time to produce this video. And let y'all know what's coming down the pipe. <clears throat> now I've been getting emails. From people giving me this story about this, this helper who was going through her boyfriend's phone and all of a sudden she found some texts where he was calling her or wanted to call her the N-word. And oh my goodness, she was so distraught. So she made this, they created this big news story, had people sending me, every time I turn around, I was getting this news story. Just like I'm getting this news story, y'all may have heard about this, and it's so funny that actually when I was coming to produce this video, somebody sent me the email of this white guy who murdered his, his girlfriend who happened to be black, but we're going to deal with that next week. Don't worry. That's, I got that on my radar. I got it on the, on the back burner. We're going to deal with that next week. Because next week, I believe, is Mother's Day. So I can give y'all a trilogy. And that's going to be the foundation of that trilogy. More on that later. But what I'm going to give y'all this week is I'm going to give y'all the reason why. White boys use the N-word with this black woman. And it's not for the reason that y'all think it is. Because I know what y'all going to say. Well, he, he used it because he's racist. Well, wait a minute. He can't be racist. He's dating a black female. How racist can he be? He's in a relationship with a black woman. So I can't give y'all this in this, this video. Y'all know what it is. Second nature like breathing. I'm going to... Take the time in the rabbit hole and explain to y'all in detail why these white men are comfortable using that word with the black women that they are married to, that they are dating. It is my contention that the majority of the times that word is uttered by white men is during sex. But I'm going to deal with that in whole. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going no further than that. You know what it is? Second nature like breathing. You want to hear it? You want to know why that is? Send me an email. I'm going to certainly send you the link. But I want to say this. <clears throat> Let me get this out the way. Because black women are constantly talking about how Everybody else shapes their image. They will say that you got a few videos on YouTube and these brothers are saying things in their YouTube videos and this is the reason why our image what it is. And I say no, that's not, no, no, that's bullshit. Your image is not affected or shaped by a few guys making YouTube videos. That's, that's a bunch, that's malarkey. Your image on the world stage is in direct correlation with your behavior on the world stage. Meaning, 
Everybody can see this. And when I say this, I'm talking about your behavior. And I've told y'all, I've said this in many of my videos, it has been my standard operating procedure. Y'all would not even hear from me on this subject if black women did not use black men as their justification to get with white men. Y'all wouldn't even hear from me because at the end of the day, I don't care. I really don't care. But when you want to try to create a narrative that puts black men down or you want to try to spread propaganda about black men, it is incumbent upon me as being a black male to do what? Push back against that bullshit. And that's the reason why y'all hear me constantly riding hard on this subject because of all the fucking propaganda. All the fucking propaganda. And actually, what you're going to see in this video, the memes that I've created, were actually going to tie into that situation with that quad heifer when she went after and showed her desperation for Governor Cuomo a couple of weeks ago. I didn't even get a chance to address that. I had the memes already created. I was ready to deal with it. And this whole situation with uh, George Floyd came up, so I put that on the back burner. So the memes that you're going to see in this video... Because I'm going to compare the two videos together. I'm going to put them together so I can kill two birds with one stone. No pun intended. And address that sister who was claiming that she was surprised by finding out that her boyfriend was using the N-word. And I'm going to tie that in with that quad piece because it actually fit. And the reason why they actually fit is because when you look at that situation with that sister who went after the governor. That depicted a level of desperation, a level of thirstiness. <clears throat> and this is what black women, this is y'all's image on the world stage, that y'all are desperate, that y'all are thirsty. After this white man, some of y'all would give a vital organ if it means that you could cuddle up with this white man. This is how y'all look. Now listen, let me say this. Ain't nobody else going to tell you this, black woman. The whole temp, pro-black, back to Africa, red, black, and green, black, first, Negro, they don't want to hurt your feelings, so they're not going to tell you this. And then after all, you're God. Like, who, are you? who, who are they to question God? So they're not going to tell you this. And then you have some Negroes who just say, you know what, they're completely indifferent, so they're not going to tell you. So the only one that's going to tell you is the one who has the utmost respect for black women, particularly dark-skinned black women, and that's me. I'm the only one that's going to respect y'all enough to tell y'all, listen, on the world stage, y'all look desperate. On the world stage, y'all look thirsty. On the world stage, y'all really look bad. It's not a good look. If that quad heifer met that governor at, a, at a, a fundraiser, at some political function, and she wanted to talk to him, whatever. But to sit back and do what she did, creating that text or sending out that tweet talking about she wanted to get with him and all this other crap, you just look desperate. You look thirsty. Likewise, and I told black women this, you, we, 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 what, what we're dealing with now with this George Floyd, you have a situation where multi-ethnic, it's this, those protests, some of everybody's out there protesting. Some of everybody's out there sharing their belief that the police go too far. Why? Because as I told y'all in the first video that I done, most people just personalize that shit. Because they have Males in their family, they have fathers. So they take that situation and they personalize it. Damn, that could have been my father. And when you look at the entire situation, listen, man, you, no matter what crime he committed or allegedly committed, you got him in custody. He's, he had, his hand is cuffed behind his back. He says he can't breathe. Sit him up, get off him. 
And most certainly, once he goes unconscious, you still stay on him. Everybody personalized that and was outraged by that, except two segments, for the most part. Two segments in American culture looked at that and didn't have a problem with that. And the first we can understand because that was who? Your alt-right? Your neo-Nazis? The Klan? We understand why they didn't have a problem with that. But the other group that didn't have a problem with what we all witnessed when, with George Floyd losing his life is black women. Black women are the only group that came up with a hashtag mad at other black women for protesting. Even the Klan didn't come up with that shit. Even the, the Nazis didn't come up with that shit. The Nazis aren't telling black women, y'all y'all need to burn y'all cake. Y'all need to stay home. The Nazis aren't saying that shit. Who's saying that? Black women. And on the world stage, your behavior is shaped by that. Not because of me making a video talking about it. I know you don't like it, but that's y'all's behavior. Y'all's behavior on the world stage is what affects your, your, how people view you. And for those of you who believe that perception is not necessarily reality, I'm of the belief that perception may not necessarily, necessarily be reality, but it's damn near close. It's damn near close. And your, your perception, the way you are perceived on the world stage, black woman, is as a thirsty, desperate female who is throwing herself at the feet of white men. That's the way you're viewed, sister. That, that ain't me doing this. That's y'all. That's y'all. And it's because of that overt desperation and because of this perfect storm, if you will, that white men can get away with a whole lot of shit. Because why? What have I told y'all? Say it with me. Y'all all heard me say it. His white skin covers a multitude of imperfections. So since he's white, there's a lot of shit that he can get away with, that nobody else can get away with. There's a lot of things that he can say that he can get away with that no other ethnic group can get away with when dealing with this black woman. Simply because he has white skin. So when we look at this sister who all of a sudden is using her boyfriend's phone and as she uses his, his phone, she finds out that he has sent out some tweets to his buddies. Talking about, I'm thinking about calling her the N-word. <laughs> uh, let, let me say this. I hope y'all don't believe that. I mean, I hope y'all really do not believe that that guy Sent out those, those tweets or those, those texts to his friends saying, I'm thinking about calling her the N-word. Bullshit. Bullshit. No, don't y'all believe that? Y'all better not believe that. If y'all believe that, y'all need to come down in this hole. If you are one who believes that that white dude actually sent a text to his friends Saying, y'all know what? I'm thinking about, wink, wink, calling her the N-word. Come on now, stop. Y'all got to come down this hole. Shameless plug for the rabbit hole production. Send me an email, I'll send you the link. If that's your mindset, because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. No, he, he, he wasn't thinking about calling her. The, matter of fact, if you allow me to just indulge my imagination for a moment, I'll tell you exactly what those texts actually read. What those texts actually read is his friends were telling him, man, I can't believe she allowed you to call her the N-word? And he's probably bragging, man, I call her the N-word every chance I get. Well, man, wait a minute. Ain't she offended by that? Hell no. Well, wait a minute. How come she's not offended? Ain't she black? Didn't you say she was black? Send me a picture. 
black? Is she really black? Yeah, she's a sister. She's a black woman. And you mean to try to tell me that she allowed you to call her the N-word while y'all was having sex? Yes. Yes. It is her suggestion. It's not mine. She tells me, hey, daddy, zaddy, I want you to call me up. <laughs> oh, you got to get the hole if you believe that he actually was thinking about calling her the N-word. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Let, let, let me just, let, let me explain this to you. Listen. Now see, I don't lock my phone. Because my, my, my attitude is this. Any woman that, that I'm around, listen, I don't want to look in your phone. I don't care who you talk to. I don't care who you text. If I'm with you and some guy calls you, you ain't got to go in the bathroom. You can talk to that nigga right there. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to look at your phone. I'm not asking to read your text. I don't want to use your emails. I don't, I really don't care. Y'all know what it is. You got on the skirt and heels, pull it up to the side right there. That's it, man. I, I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. And since I don't care to read your text and your phone, then God damn it, don't ask me to read mine. I ain't locking shit up. I ain't, I ain't putting no code on shit. Don't even touch it. Keep your paws off of it. And that's just, that's just the reality of it. But now, even if I was one of y'all, and when I say one of y'all, I'm talking about you Negroes who are still in love with these women, who still want to call them your boo. You, you want to get on your knees and present a ring to the heifer. If you of that mindset, then what you're going to do is you're going to try to hide your phone from her. I'll give you a prime example. We and some brothers were talking about this. We, we, we were discussing Tiger Woods. You remember Tiger Woods when he got into his first altercation with his wife, that whole story, his wife bashed in his car with that golf club. And Tiger Woods, she read his phone. And I was like, man, why in the world would Tiger Woods be cheating on his wife and leave those explosive texts in a phone that his wife has access to? And some of the brothers had to remind me, well, wait a minute, brother. You're saying that as a Tiger Woods, you know, he, he, he remember now how he was reared. Now, he may know that now, but remember now he came out, he's talking about he's cockablai Asian, he's he half Asian and all this other crap. Tiger Woods didn't really necessarily grow up in the hood. If you grow up around black people, you in the hood, that's standard operating procedure, man. If you're going to cheat on her, my God, don't let her get to your phone. Now, if you don't give a fuck, like I don't, like that white dude don't, then you leave those texts in the phone. I don't care. So when she read that white dude's phone and was in his phone, you have to know that if a woman gets a hold of your phone, she ain't going to just make no phone call. She's going to check three things. And not necessarily in this order. She's going to check your text. If your email is connected to that phone, she's going to check your email. She's going to look at your call log. And if you have social media accounts, let's say Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, you know, YouTube, all connected in there, she's going to go through those. Yes, she is. She's going to go through that shit. You have to know this. That's if she get access to it. Now, if you're concerned and you don't want to leave her, lose her because you're in love with her, then you can't let her get that shit. But if you like me and that white dude, we're going to leave that shit in there. So if that sister got that white dude's phone and he still had those texts where he's saying, hey, I was thinking about, wink, wink, calling her the N-word, and he leaves those texts in a phone that he knows his girlfriend uses, what is that saying? He doesn't care if she finds out about the text. And why does he care? Because him calling her the N-word is common practice. He has no reason to hide those. After all, I'm white, man. Shit. I'm a white dude. I ain't got to hide that. All I got
got to do is just remind you, wait a minute now, sister, I know you mad, but look, look at this skin. And she going to buck up, she going to shut up. Oh, okay, all right. You, ain't, you apologize, I forgive you. Because his white skin covers a multitude of imperfections and sins. So her saying that he was thinking about calling her the N-word, bullshit, do not believe the hype. Don't believe that shit. It is common practice. It's, everybody knows this. And as I told y'all, and I'm going to explain to y'all to y'all in the whole, the time that that word is most regularly used is during some kind of sexual event, some kind of sexual escapade. And it is my contention, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that the first time that that word is uttered, it is asked to be uttered by that black female. Now, that's just where I'm at. Now, I know y'all not going to like that. I know y'all not going to like that. I know that's going to offend y'all. But in order for y'all to truly understand that, you're going to have to get the whole shameless plug one more again. Rabbit Hole Productions, send me an email, send you the link. But you got to deal with this desperation. You got to understand how desperate black women are for this white man. And since they are so desperate for him, since they got to have him, since they throw themselves at him, he is able to get away with murder simply because he's white. Simply because he has white skin. So her saying that I was reading his phone tells me this white dude left that in a phone that he knows you're going to use. He know you're going to check his text. He doesn't care. He ain't trying to hide that. Plus, I'm of the opinion that she changed the wording in the text. I don't even believe they read like that. I don't even believe that was a conversation. She had to clean that up. Because when the black female, there's one thing that they do. And they follow this guy. They see they got this shit from this white woman. And that man, <laughs> yo, man, this, this, let, let, me, let me tread lightly here. Because this is stuff I shouldn't be really, really covering in the whole but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on and be very delicate with it here. And I may revisit it in the whole straight down the center of the plate, straight no chasing. But what they done, what they do rather, is they get this shit from this white woman. And what I mean by that is this. The only time him using the N-words become N-words, <laughs> N-word becomes problematic is when that relationship is on the downside. When, it's, when, it's, when she knows and she, she can sense that this relationship is almost over, then all of a sudden, him using the N-word is problematic. It's problematic. And actually, I believe that if she even mentioned to him, well, why are you using the N-word? His response is going to be, well, you was going to ask me to use it in the first place. This is to be nothing new. You heard this all the time. Matter of fact, you remember the first time you... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me thinking I'm doing this whole man. Yo, you remember the first time we kissed? <laughs> it was you who asked me to use that word. So now if it didn't offend you then, why does it offend you now? Because the relationship is almost over. And in order for her to regain her self-respect, her dignity, she has to say, he uses that word against me and it offended me. Now she has to be offended by it. See, this is what she gets from that white woman. Let me explain. The white female can deal with a Negro. She can date a Negro. Let's say she dates a Negro on the East Coast. She's, she's on the East Coast. And she's popular. Everybody knows her. Everybody knows that she's dating this black guy. Now, white guys, if she's cute and she keeps herself up and she keeps herself nice, yes, they will still hit that. But they're not going to date her. They're not going to marry her. 
But they will hit it if she keeps herself up, even though they know she dated black guys. The only way that white woman can regain her purity, she has to relocate. If she's on the East Coast, she has to go to the Midwest. She has to go down South. She has to go to the West Coast. Why? Because then she can become just a pure white woman. And nobody knows her dating preference. She's just another white girl. But now if she messes up and have a mongrel child, she's done. She's done. Whenever anybody sees her with that child, they know what she used to date. So she's finished. But as long as she doesn't have a mongrel baby, she can just relocate and go to a different city where nobody knows her. She's just another white girl. And I gave y'all a classic example. And I'm not going to say the sister's, well, I call her the sister. I'm not going to say the white woman's name, but I shared this in the hole. And there's this white female that I know. And she stays in, if you're familiar with Kansas, Overland Park is just, I mean, it's, it's cornfields. Hell, it's, it's, it's John Deere tractors. I mean, it's the children of the corn. So, that's where she stays. That's where she's, well, she, she was from. She goes home to visit her family. Now, she's driving a Chrysler 300 sitting on 28-inch chrome rims. And when she was driving back home, something w went wrong with her car, so her father took her car to the dealership. Now, you would think he would just roll with her or drove her car to the dealership. No, he drove his truck. And this is what she's telling me. She's distraught over this. He drove his truck, and then when they got to the dealership, he walked ahead of her. He didn't really want to walk in with her, and she was bothered by that. And she's asking me, why, why do you think that is? And I had a heart to tell the woman, listen, <laughs> you in over the park, Kansas, sister, I mean, woman, this, let me explain something to you. You, you're dealing with in an area where everybody has John Deere tractors. This is what they drive. This is what they into. Cornfields. Hay bales. I mean, this, this is where you're from. This is Mayberry. And you rolling in there driving a Chrysler 300 sitting on 28-inch chrome rims, that screams nigger. So your dad knows this. So when he went to that dealership, the reason why he wanted to drive his truck and walked ahead of you is because he knew once his buddies looked at his daughter's car, they were going to know, hey, <laughs> hey man, we got one. We got one. Look at them rims. Look at, look at them 28 inch chrome rims she got on that thing. And my God, don't let them go through her CD changer because I'm quite sure she had some of that bango bongo, I shot the motherfucker because he stole my crack kind of music in her changer. So that's another dead giveaway. Now, the only way she can regain that purity, if she stayed in that area, she would have to leave. She would have to relocate, and then she can become, and well, she'd have to get rid of rims, too, because those rims is just a dead giveaway. I mean, those rims just scream, I date black men. And her dad knew that. And that's the reason why he was really ashamed to walk in that dealership with her. And I didn't have the heart to tell her that because I knew she was still upset, but that's just the reality of it. And only way for her to clean that up, she's going to have to get rid of those rims. And as a matter of fact, I would have told her, listen, what you need to do the next time you go home is put the original tires back on that car. Drive home with the original tires. Don't drive home with those 28-inch chrome rims. Matter of fact, you drive down the expressway with those chrome rims, you're going to get stopped. You're going to get pulled over. You put the original tires on there and drive. Even if you speed, what cops going to look at you and let you go on about your business. But you put those chrome rims on there, here they come. You can drive under the speed limit. They're pulling you over. Why? Because of those chrome rims. And they're going to want to search that car. Until they find out it's a blonde white girl in there, then they might give you a pass. Or they may want to look in the truck and find out where the nigga is because they know you date a nigga. You got to with these rims. It's a dead giveaway. What am I saying? The black woman deals with this white man. She throws herself at this white man. She worships this white man. And because she worships him and she's so desperate for him, he's allowed to get away with a lot of shit. And the only time it's going to become problematic that he uses that word is when the relationship is almost over because she wants to justify. Because she don't want that getting out. 
that, well, yeah, I used the N-word regularly with my ex-girlfriend, and everybody going to be looking at her. You tolerated that? You let that white boy call you a nigger? And you still slept with him? And he was calling you a nigger? And you still bent that ass over? And she knows that's not the look. So she has to clean that up. So what does she say? I was reading his phone. <laughs> he come, he come. I was reading his phone. <laughs> and he had some texts in his phone. And he was telling his boys that he was thinking about wink, wink. Calling me the N-word. <laughs> that shit don't even make sense. <laughs> it don't even make sense. No, she doctored that shit up. Because she trying to play damage control. She trying to clean that up. She don't want to admit this. That he used that word with rapidity. On a regular basis. Y'all remember that sister that recorded her, her boyfriend who was a Donald Trump supporter and he was telling her, you don't like Donald Trump, take your black ass back to Africa? That, that's not something you that comes out of the blue. No, that's regular conversation. That's regular stuff he says to her. Take your fucking ass back to Africa. And she still goes to sleep in the bed with him because this is how much they worship him. This is how much they love him. His white skin covers, as I keep telling y'all, a multitude of imperfections and sins. And again, it only became problematic. <laughs> when the relationship is down near over, all of a sudden now she want to record him. Oh, I'm going to get you on tape saying this stuff to me. And she thought she was making him look bad. No, you're making yourself look bad, sister. Why are you with a guy who talks to you like that? I thought you was a leveled up black woman. The most educated in American society. You highfalutin and feminine. You, the, you got your act together living your best life. Oh, everybody wants you. Everybody's looking at you. When you walk across the street, traffic stops. Never mind it's a red light, but you won't let her go on and be, think what she want to think. The traffic stops when she walks across the street. Yet and still with all this highfalutin class and dignification that she has, she sits back and allows a white guy who was unemployed and homeless to call her a nigger. Explain this to me, folks. Explain this to me. <laughs> I can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I, I, hey, look, look, let me wrap this up, man. Let, let, let me go on and get down to this cigar shop and see if I can't get my name in this hat for these uh, box of cigars, box of La Florida Dominicanas. Y'all want that rabbit hole? I'm going to deal with this and explain to y'all why this is in more detail. Straight down the center of the plate. Straight no chaser. You know what it is. Second nature like breathing. Send me an email. I'll send you the link. Because at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs>